Hello, welcome to the Friday, July 1st, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Nice case study today by Brad, who looked at a Quarkbot infection that then resulted in Cobalt Strike being used for command and control. Nothing really all that exciting or new here, but one thing that Brad points out in this particular example is that the uh, Cobalt Strike connection kept on working even after the domain used to actually direct the victim uh, to the particular Cobalt Strike server had been suspended. Ended. The simple reason for this is that while well, Cobalt Strike fell back to the IP address, typically you will find a hostname as well as an IP address that can be configured as a command control server. Yes, the certificate was no longer any good, of course, for the IP address. It just uh, contained the hostname, but still good enough for Cobalt Strike to maintain the connection. And Brad discovered that sort of a week after the original domain was uh, removed. Little uh, side note here on this, uh, getting domains suspended often depends a lot on the registrar that is being used here. Uh, just a big kudos to Namecheap. The register Namecheap has been very responsive in revoking domains used for malicious purposes. So if you are attempting to do something malicious with your domain, please make it easier for us to take your domain down and register it with Namecheap. Back in April, Soho did publish an update for Manage Engine 80 Audit Plus. Uh, this uh, update fixed vulnerability CVE 2022-28219 and caused a lot of excitement in part because, well, Manage Engine 80 Audit Plus, it's used to manage Active Directory and a compromise of the system could potentially compromise Active Directory. Horizon 3 AI, the company that found this vulnerability, now published a blog post post showing how this particular vulnerability can actually be exploited and it goes in quite a bit of detail how to essentially end up with a complete domain compromise and remote code execution. It sort of all starts out with an unauthenticated XML external entity injection. Now often these kind of laws they're bad in the sense that they can leak sensitive information but typically not leading uh, to a remote code execution, but that's sort of just the start of the exploit chain they have here. It goes to then untrusted Java deserialization and path traversal all the way up to then uh, NTLM uh, relay attacks. And that in the end gets you to full control of uh, the domain controller. Like I said, the underlying vulnerability was patched back in April. It was well publicized back then, so I hope you're ahead of it. But uh, with all these details now, I would expect sort of an uptick in exploitation of this particular flaw. And MITRE updated its CWE Top 25. And not sure you're familiar with, uh, you are with CWE, but it's sort of a derivative of CVEs. CVEs, well, I mention them all the time. These are numbers assigned to vulnerabilities. CWEs is common weakness enumerator, and it stands for weaknesses like buffer overflows or SQL injection of vulnerabilities. So each CVE may be assigned to one or more CWEs. And what MITRE is doing occasionally is to summarize the top 25 most common CWEs there is seeing. Some interesting shifts there, I thought. One is that there are three new Two entries. One is a race condition, one is code injection, and then we have uncontrolled resource consumption. So that's part probably of also deserialization. I have to look this up in more detail what that CVE is, CWE is about. Also, uh, the, the ones that sort of got uh, fell off the top 25 are um, exposure sensitive information to an unauthorized actor. So maybe if we're getting actually better at some of these authentication issues. 
also insufficiently protected credentials so hashing of credentials we appear to be getting better at that and finally incorrect permission assigned to a critical resource that sounds a little bit similar to the exposure of sensitive information so overall access control may be actually improving but code injection and the sort of code injection and command injection those two are definitely on their way up and of course uh, these are usually critical vulnerabilities so definitely something uh, to be looking out for well and that's it for today came a little bit shorter and lighter today but the big weekend here is coming up at least for those of you in the u.s uh, monday is a holiday so there will be no podcast on monday Try to take some time off and not listen to any podcasts after you're done listening to this podcast. And uh, let's hope that you won't be called back for any emergency. There's always a chance that uh, with what's going on with uh, Ukraine and uh, Russia, there have been some denial of service attacks, uh, for example, against Norway, I believe, uh, these last couple of days. There's always a chance that someone will take advantage of july 4th weekend uh, to uh, attack systems if you can afford it i know not many people can but if a system isn't needed over the long weekend maybe just turn it off and that way well it will be less likely exploited that's it for today thanks for listening and talk to you again on tuesday bye